Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to the video where we're going to talk about X-link dominant mode of inheritance. And it's going to be dominant because the little that we are concerned about is dominant. All right. And the little is present where it was present in the sex chromosomes and more specifically is in the X chromosome. That's why it is called X linked, right? It's not present in Y chromosome because it's not Y linked. And, and we'll explore Y linked in another video. Anyways, we're going to talk about the several criteria which we are going to use to determine whether a mode of inheritance uh, for a trait is X-link dominant when we look at a pedigree, right? And remember, we cannot prove whether a trait is a, uh, inherited via a specific mode of inheritance. We can only eliminate other possibilities of modes of inheritance via um, our analysis of the pedigrees and criteria which we are going to talk about and look at uh, right now. So the first criteria is there's approximately equal chance for males and females to be affected, right? And this is obviously in general and we're going to talk about more specific cases later on but in general there is equal chance for males and females to be affected okay and remember this is not quite usual uh, as as because females have two x chromosomes right and males have x and y chromosomes right there's a uh, difference between the X chromosome present in male offsprings and female offsprings. Therefore, it's possible for an unequal chance for males getting the trait uh, than females, right? And we're going to ex explore this unequal chance later on as we talk about uh, the possibilities of genotypes being homozygous and heterozygous. The second criteria is that the trait cannot skip generations. This is because um, if an individual uh, is a carrier, so to speak, which is a heterozygous genotype, right? That individual will not be a carrier if you like, right? Uh, because he or she is affected. Therefore, it's the same thing here. So, right, the trait of concern cannot skip generations. And you remember, the son has X and Y chromosomes, right? And each offspring gets one sex chromosome from his parents. Well, the son will get the X chromosome from its father, or his father, and he will get his Y chromosomes from his mother. And we're dealing with X-linked dominant here. And what happens is that there is no allele present on the Y chromosome. And therefore, if the father's affected, he would not pass the alle affected allele on his X chromosome to his son because he will only pass his Y chromosome to his son. So let's just draw a brief diagram to summarize. All right, sweet. So let's just make some room here. And let's just depict what happens. So we have X and Y which is from the father and we have X and X which is from the mother. These are sex chromosomes by the way and let's just say that the father is affected which means um, let's just, in this case it's X-linked dominant therefore it must have a dominant allele that we are concerned about so this capital A is our uh, allele that's responsible for our trait of concern and it's, our trait of concern is dominant therefore it has a dominant allele. And the mother, let's say that the mother is unaffected, right? And therefore, it must have two little A alleles because if it has a capital A allele, then the mother will be affected. In this case, the mother is unaffected. Therefore, two little, uh, two little A alleles. And there's no allele on the Y chromosome because it's X-linked, okay? Well, it does not have the trait uh, allele that's responsible for our trait of concern, right? It has other alleles, though, for like other you know traits, but that is not uh, those alleles present on the Y chromosomes are not like uh, we didn't care about it because it's not our trait of concern. Let's say these alleles capital A and little a are for a trait of concern uh, let's say eye color for example right or something. Anyways we have X and X 
x and x here, x and y, and x and y. And as you can see that, okay, there's 50% chance if the uh, mother and the father interbreed and produce offsprings, right? They would have 50% chance the offsprings will be females, right, or daughters, and another 50% chance that the offsprings will be males, which makes sense, right? Um, yeah, that's what we would expect anyways. And let's have a look at this. We have capital A here, little a here, capital A here, little a here, uh, just little a here, and little a here, right? So what happens here is that the Y chromosome from the father is passed to the son, and the son will get the X chromosome from his mother. Same thing here, this Y chromosome is coming from his father, and this X chromosome is coming from the mother, right? And then obviously for the females, the females get one one um, X chromosome from the mother, and one X chromosome from the father. The order does not really matter here, alright? So this could go here, and this could go here. Does not really matter. Um, overall, the genotype of this uh, individual, if it inherits this combination, it would be capital A, little a, right? Does not matter if it's little a, capital A, capital A, little a, same thing. Anyways, so here is, therefore, the next criteria is, oops, I should probably label this, so this is criteria number one, this is criteria number two. Criteria number three is that there is no transmission, transmission of trait of concern from father to sons. So obviously this is, uh, so if the mother is unaffected, right, and the father is affected in, uh, and all, and then in a pedigree, you see that, um, no sons are affected, but all the daughters are affected because the mother is unaffected and it has the capital A allele, all the daughters, you, you will know that the, um, mode of inheritance would, would be, what you call it, X-linked dominant, right? And then we'll do some questions later where we'll wrap up all the different types of mode of inheritance that we have explored, right? So number four, yep, there's more than three here. Number four is that the affected mother will pass on the affected X allele to the daughters and sons, right? Which we'll explore here. So let's just say we have an affected mother here. So let's get the... So it has capital A, and let's just say that's does not really matter if the father is affected or not. And let's just say the mother is um we call it heterozygous. It does not really matter. So capital A, little a, little a, little a, capital A, and little a. Uh, so what you see here is that the mother is uh, passing on the sex chromosome the, or the X chromosome with the affected capital A allele to both the daughter and the son. So this is just be something that you'll be keeping in mind of in general about X-linked cases that the mother would be passing on, on um, X chromosome to daughters and son. So this would not really be a criteria that you'd be assessing, right? Because, you know, it happens either way, whether the mother is affected or not affected, it will still pass the X chromosome with the affected or not affected allele to both the daughters and son. Because obviously the sons have X chromosomes as well, right? X, Y. Yeah, also has an X, which he gets it from the mother. Number five, if the father is affected or the daughter is affected. This is something specific to X-linked dominant. So if the father is affected or daughter is affected. Why is this the case? Well, if we look at here, at this example, which we explored earlier, the father's affected, the mother's not affected, right? But all the daughters are affected. Why? Because the daughter must inherit that 
X chromosome from his father. The daughter can only inherit one chromosome from the mother. It cannot inherit both chromosomes from the mother. Therefore, if the father is affected, the daughter will inherit the X chromosome, which has the affected allele, which is dominant, and therefore the, the daughters would be affected because the even though if the mother has an unaffected little A allele, since this is X-linked, since this is X-linked dominance case, the capital A allele that inherit from the father would override the recessive allele that inherit from the mother. Obviously, if you in explore the other scenario where the mother is affected and the father is affected, the situation would be slightly different, but rule number five will still apply. So let's just say that the father is affected, the mother is affected as well, and let's just say. I don't know, let's just keep it capital A, capital A for now. And what you see is that all the daughters affected, so rule number five are, uh, still applies. And all the sons are affected as well because the mother is affected, right? And the sons inherit the X uh, chromosome from his mother, and the mothers, both of them, are affected, so 100% chance that both sons are also affected. However, if the mother is, let's just say, heterozygous, then only 50% of the sons are affected. However, the daughters are still 100% affected. Right? So number five, if the father is affected, all daughters are affected. This applies no matter what the genotype of the mother is, heterozygous or, uh, or homozygous. Now, all affected males would have an infected mother. Let's look at that. All right, number six is that if the um, father is affected, the mother must be affected. So why is this the case? Well, here we're talking about X-linked dominant, right? I'm, I'm trying to remind you of this because it's really important uh, because it's different to autosomal inheritance, right? In this case, the father's affected. That means that it ha would have something like this, right? It has X and Y because it's a male father. And it is X-linked dominant, right? We're talking about X-linked dominant here. Therefore, we must have a capital A allele. And where does, this uh, where does the father inherit this capital A a little from well inherits well the father inherits this capital a little with the x chromosome right and it got his x chromosome from his mother and therefore the mother must be affected why because let's just say the mother would have therefore therefore the mother would have a genotype combination of this or this right the mother could be heterozygous or it can be homozygous right homozygous heterozygous right in both cases the mother can pass on an x chromosome with a capital a allele which is the trait of concern right however in both cases the mother is affected right because capital a allele overrides the recessive little a allele in this case uh, like like in case number one in case number two it does not really matter right because both alleles are capital a so you're affected but in both cases they are affected right case number one and case number two the mother will be affected so the mother would be expressing the trait of concern whatever that may be blue eye color red eye color i don't know depending on what capital a allele rep uh represents oops I probably want to change this to black. Okay. So number seven, which will probably be our last one, is that unaffected males could have an affected mother. Unaffected males will, I mean, could not always have an 
unaffected. Unaffected mana. So let's have a look at the first scenario, I think. Was that first scenario? No, second scenario. Let's just redraw it. X, Y. And let's just say that the father is affected. And the mother is, let's just say, is heterozygous, right? What we see is that for X link dominant, if the father is affected, all the daughters must be affected. Oops, this should be little a. And this will be capital A, so the sun will be affected. However, 50% of the cases, the sun could be unaffected. And lastly, for number 7, unaffected males could have an affected mother. Unaffected males could have an affected mother. So let's just see how this could happen using a Punnett square. So we have X, Y, and let's say the father's affected. And the mother is, let's say is heterozygous. What happens here is that you can see that 50% of the males are affected this affected, right? The males affected, but 50% of the males are unaffected. But the mother's affected, right? Because it has capital A allele and it's X linked dominant, so the dominant allele overrides the recessive allele. So it's affected mother. So, yeah. So, the best thing that you can do in my recommendation is that. You should always test out the possibilities, right, by drawing a Punnett square. That is my tip, right? You should always draw a Punnett square to test the different scenarios and think about, okay, is there other scenarios, etc. right? So this comes with practice and being comfortable with, you know, identifying the different possibilities. So in the next video, we'll talk about X-Link recessive as a mode of inheritance for a particular trait that we're concerned about. Uh, so like in this case, this trait that we're concerned about, I don't know, whatever that capital A and little a alleles uh, specifies for, right? Could specify for like, I don't know, it could be like, you know, color blindness, for example, right? That's a typical sex linked trait. However, color blindness is usually recessive. So that doesn't really apply here, but yeah. So see you in the next video.